your attention to uh, the book of Philippians, chapter number 4, verse 6 and 7. And as a bonus scripture, I want to share with you 1 Peter, chapter 5, verse 7. That's just a bonus scripture. But I thought uh, that scripture would come from Philippians, chapter 4. Verse 6 and 7, and I will be reading or sharing with you from the uh, NIV translation. Amen. We will appreciate the reading. That's a shifting in the words here, opposed to your King James translation. Amen. So that's again, the book of Philippians, chapter number 4, verse 6 and 7. When your pastor said, amen. amen. Don't forget about the bonus text. First Peter 5 and 7. You'll see what I'm talking about. Amen. Amen. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 says, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which stands in all understanding, will guard your heart and your minds in Christ Jesus. And your bonus scripture for today is, First Peter 5 and 7 it says, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Amen. 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 As I thought for today is when you feel anxious. Amen. There may be some of us that have gathered here at Mount Zion on this beautiful and glorious estate. We may have some of some of us may be just a little bit anxious about something or someone. It is no secret this morning, man, it's not that life is full of uncertainties. And to have the weight of life's uncertainties on our shoulders is enough to create anxiety. And like most people, the coronavirus has brought about frustration and stress and boredom and worry. A survey revealed that we spend almost 14 hours every single week worrying. 1.53 hours every day we are worrying about something or someone. And some of us may be anxious about aging. Yeah. I'm getting a little gray in my head. Stop right there for a minute. When you start to progress, to move, to get a little gray in your hair, you better say, thank you, God. Because gray means great. That means God's been good to you to get to the point in your life where you begin to get a little gray. In your head. Very good aging. Yeah. I'm 40 years old. And having noticed, I've developed a little thin spot. <laughs> I'm in the top of my head here. And I wonder if I get around 45 years old, I think I'm turn totally bald. <laughs> so I'm a little bit concerned here about aging. Yeah. I'm not vain or anything like that. But I have to notice through the bar to grab my eyes here. I think the old folk called it yeah, I'm getting anxious for my aging. And you know, it, it's the strangest thing here. I bought this new belt. <laughs> and when I bought it, I had me noticed that it had six holes in it. And I'm amazed, I'm a little bit concerned about my waistline. And when I bought it, they had six holes in it. And when I first bought it, I was at hole. Number four. But then this time we know I had to notice that I had to go to hole number five. I'm getting scared about this thing. I wonder why my waistline done moved to hole number four to hole number five here. Well, maybe I need to cut back on my rock and roll ice cream. And apple pie. Cheetos, Fritos, and Doritos. Word about my waistline. 
Yeah, but then I worried about my age now. I'm anxious. Because my eyes, you know, they, they're not as keen yeah. as they used to be. I used to buy reading glass, but now I got prescription glass. Yeah. Anxious about aging. Yeah, because I, I, I don't hear as good as I, what did you say? I ain't quite here. We take that again. <laughs> Sorry, I don't talk about <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm anxious about aging because I, I kind of forget things. You know, I, I don't remember things like I used to. Anxious about aging. And, you know, I, I kind of notice that sometimes when I wake up in the morning, I'm a little stiff. <laughs> There's certain areas of my body that never used to be stiff before until I get me from somebody. So I'm anxious yeah, about aging. Anxious uh, about retirement, because you know, I, I'm thinking about retirement up a year or two or something like that. And I'm wondering, I'm kind of anxious, what in the world am I going to do all that extra time that I got when I really get rid of the time? Am I going to be able to keep myself occupied? Mm -hmm. So I'm concerned, anxious about retirement. And then not only that, will I have enough money to live on, and then live good. <laughs> hey, we take vacation every now and then. Then I'm anxious about my kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got one in kindergarten. I got one in middle school, one in high school, and I'm anxious about the circle of their friends. I'm anxious because I want them to, to grow to be respectable and responsible young men and young women. So I'm anxious about the well being of my kids. So, in other words, there's a whole bunch of things in life and situations in life that cause us every now and then to be anxious. Well, what is worry? The Greek word translated anxious in Philippians 4 6 means to be. Hold in different directions. That's what it means. My, our hopes pull us in one direction, but fear pulls me in the opposite direction. I, I really hope this happens for me, but I really wonder because fear makes me wonder if it's ever going to happen. I hope that all these things that's going on in my life will work out for my good. But fear tells me, I'm wondering if things will ever come together. So I'm anxious about that. My hope pulls me in this direction. And fear pulls me in the opposite direction. So my spirit is in a total war. Yeah. I'm being pulled from concern into panic. I'm concerned about this, but I'm losing it over here. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'm concerned over here, but I'm at my breaking point mm -hmm. over there. Talk the Lord in my spirit. What we may not realize is that this thing called anxiety and worry has physical consequences. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anxiety, my brothers and sisters, suppresses your immune system, mm -hmm. elevates your blood pressure, mm -hmm. creates cholesterol mm -hmm. that blocks arteries in your heart. It gives you headaches, don't it? Mm -hmm. Gives you neck pains. Mm -hmm. Gives you also mm -hmm. yeah. Anxiety affects our thinking. And do you not know that sometimes this thing called worry and anxiety, it messes with our digestive system. Amen. And a whole bunch of it is gone. Got some tongues, <laughs> elbow cells, <laughs> Pepto Bismol, up in your medicine cabinet. Worry and got your nerves all messed up. Mm. Now, from a spiritual point of view, 
Worry is wrong thinking, which affects your mind. And Paul reminds us in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, he says, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. And I just tell somebody that worry is the biggest and the greatest thief of your joy. Mm -hmm. And we tell that says over and over and over again. Quit worrying. Mm -hmm. But the thief, Satan, the thief, is constantly roaming to and fro in our life, robbing us of our joy. Mm -hmm. and Paul reminds us here in this text that the peace of God to keep your heart and your mind through Christ Jesus. When you feel anxious, remember that God is the protector of your heart and your mind. In other words, your heart and your mind is in protective custody. As that MC Hamlet would say, can't touch this. <laughs> <laughs> Worry is like walking on the treadmill. You're walking, but she ain't going nowhere. <laughs> I'm running 30 minutes, but I ain't going nowhere. Worry will bring tomorrow's storm into the sunshine of your today. Why can I kind of like that one? Worry! Bring tomorrow's storm into the sunshine of your today. That's what Matthew writes in 634. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. But then Dr. Luke supports what he says. He said, Who of you, by worrying, can add one single hour? To your life. Yeah, yeah I get up at 6 o'clock every morning. But I'm going to add a half to my life. I'm going to lay from 6 o'clock to 7 o'clock. I'm going to worry about shit for a whole hour. Add a half to my life. No, you're not adding no half to your life. You take an hour away from your life. But let's be real this morning. There are all sorts of things that we should be concerned about. Be concerned about your health, your finances. You can plan for your children's education. You can plan for retirement. Not only you can plan for eternity. And when you plan for eternity, you got two options. Heaven or hell. So plan well. <laughs> when you feel anxious, we can find the peace of God. In the power of God and the presence of God and the promises of God in the word of God. Talk to me, Isaiah. He said, he may be all like he said, feel that when you pass through the waters. I'm with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not overtake you. When you walk through fire, you will not be burned. He said, do not worry. Be not dismayed because the battle is not yours. But it's God's. When you feel anxious, Paul said, let me help y'all out. He said, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. When you feel anxious, you got to learn how to pray about it. And see, prayer involves three things. Adoration, Supplication and appreciation. The Father enjoys us, His children, saying, Thank you. Every now and then. Talked about in Sunday school this morning. Entry to His gates with thanksgiving. And every now and then, God wants to heal us. Say, God, thank you. What you already done in my life. Thank you, Father God, what you're doing. Right now. I thank you, Father God, what you're going to do in advance. Right. Jesus healed ten lepers. One of them came back 
to say thank you. Yeah. How are we among those that will come back to say thank you? Are we one of the ten that will say, God, I thank you? Are we one of the ten that really realize if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side? Where would I be? Are we one of the ten that will come to a reality and say, God, I thank you that you woke me up this morning. Yeah, I'm one of the ten that said, God, thank you that I got a roof over my head. I'm one of the ten that don't mind saying that I got a thank you that I'm in church this morning instead of a hospital bed or a prison. I'm one of the ten that said, God, Thank you for a measure of help and say, yeah, I'm one of the ten that don't mind confessing that Jesus is the strength in my life. Of whom should I be afraid? Doctor reported a survey on where it indicated that 8% of things people worry about are really legitimate matters of concern. The other 92% were either imaginary worries or what if worries or they involve matters in which we had no control over anyway. And so the right praying and the right thinking and the right living will bless you real good when you feel anxious. Because Matthew reminds us that sin or worry is a sin. He said, when you wear it, you are living as though God does not exist. Oh, wow. mm -hmm. And somehow, along life's way, we just may forget that God still sits enthroned above the surface of the earth. And he knows exactly what's going on in our family circle. Knows everything that's going on in that little circle of worry. And there are some people who will, out of their attitude, you know what? If God will just take care of them big things and the major things in my life, then maybe I can handle the little things. This type of attitude involves the assumption that God is far too busy with life's emergency or life and death situation to be concerned, even to notice the little, little stuff that I'm going through. And so we worry. He's not taking this stuff. I can handle, yeah, I'm bad, big, bad, bad, bad to the bone. I can handle the small stuff. And so we wear it instead of giving it all to God. So sometimes we got to let go and let God. Now I'm going to say two, three things. You may not remember, but I say at least remember one thing. Everything that makes you fret is a subject of prayer. You know what? I'll give you a minute. Everything that gives me all been out of shape jacked up, swole up, messed up is a subject of prayer. So we are almost finished. We just encouraged this morning that God is still in control. We are always, we should always be encouraged that, that the God that we serve is what I call a triple A kind of God. He's always available Always accessible and always adequate. Who would want to serve a God like that? He can handle your anxieties. So let me close with this this morning. Lest I keep you too long and worry your patience. <laughs> let me finish it up. Big on the mic. <laughs> Unless, you, <laughs> Unless you get anxious. <laughs> Come on, preacher, shut it down. Get <laughs> going like that. <laughs> <laughs> the 
word. Worry, hear me now. <laughs> the word worry is translated as strangle. Hear me now. Strangle. Choke. Strangle. Strangle. Mm -hmm. And it's the picture, the image of a wolf that grabs a young sheep by its throat mm -hmm. and chokes it or strangles it to death. And I need to tell somebody this morning that you need to be careful that worry and anxiety don't strangle you to death. So when you feel anxious, pray about it. When you feel anxious, talk to God about it. And that's all I'm talking now with you today. God bless you. Have your smile up for you. Feel anxious. God bless you. Amen. Amen. So those who are searching help me. You anxious about your salvation? Who said the wheel? Let them come. Is that one? Man, woman, boy, girl. That want to accept Christ as Lord and Savior of their life. Is that one today? And I can be so blessed and highly favored. Amen. May the peace of God that surpasses all understanding be with us and God us. Jesus' name, amen. God bless you today. Amen. 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 amen.